Have you ever baked a cake in a jar? And I don't mean taking a jar, baking a cake, and then layering the sheet cake rounds into the jar with some frosting in between, but actually baking it in the jar so that you can preserve it for later. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how you can do that. It's less of a recipe and more of a how-to, but I will show you the recipe that I've been using for this cake in a jar. And here's how I do it. Why would you wanna bake a cake in a jar? Sometimes you would like to make it last longer than just a few days on the counter or a few more days in the refrigerator. You can also send it to somebody in the mail. You can make little individual gifts. And also if you are a single person or maybe a two person household and you would like to bake, the amount for one cake but not have to eat it right away or maybe you're trying to do a little portion control then this is perfect because you can also determine the size of your jar and that's going to be my next point here what jars can you use let's first talk about sizes there are various sizes here most common sizes in the united states are the mason jars and i think this is a really good size jar for baking a cake in a jar. However, you can also easily get WEC jars. I have an entire video in which I go into the differences between the WEC jars and the mason jars, and I'll be linking it in the description box if you're interested in that. So WEC has something that I really like, and that is a bigger size here that is similar to a quart size, but the quart size mason jar has a bit of a, what we call a shoulder. This one doesn't. And why does it matter for making or baking a cake in a jar? Because you can get the cake out really easily out of the jar. Now, for some people that may not matter so much, the, like I said, these pint size mason jars also do the same thing. They don't have a shoulder. So the, Weck jars are actually my first choice because they're really sturdy and if you compare the weight um, and the thickness of the glass, you will notice that these are sturdier. And oftentimes people say, well, you can't really use mason jars to bake cakes in them because they don't withstand the heat. I don't know. I have done it a few times and they hold up really well. If you're in doubt, you can always get the Weck jars and then you'll definitely be on the safe side. You can also repurpose jam jars or whenever you have a glass jar. And I don't really have a lot of them, even though I do repurpose them, I don't have them in my kitchen. What I did find though was a little baby food jar. And what's important is that you have some sort of lid that has a rubber coating or something in there that seals it. And this one you is a twist off lid and you will know whether it's sealed because you won't have that little I don't know if it's on camera, <laughs> um, but you will, you'll know if you actually got a vacuum seal in there. You could use, if you didn't want to use a baby food jar, you could use a small mason jar just like this. But then I'm thinking, you know, they're really tiny and it's almost like, what's the point? It's cute if you just want to bake them and I'll go into the various ways that you can bake them and then what to do with them or not. If you just want to bake them in the jar because it's cute for like a kid's birthday party, you don't even need to worry about what kind of lid you have. And even this, I think just spooning the cake out is perfectly fine. If you want to eat it out of the jar rather than inverting it onto a plate. Now you're wondering what kind of cakes you can bake in a jar. And sometimes there is a little bit more that I want to say later that influences what I'm going to say now. So bear with me. The easiest way, if you want to preserve your cake, if you don't want to eat it within a few days or a week, would be anything like a pound cake or a sponge cake or something that's like a, I just posted a sourdough pumpkin bread. All of that would be perfect. If you want to preserve it and you want to make it last for months, I don't necessarily recommend cheesecakes. Now I think for starters, it's a really good idea to start with a very simple yellow cake or even something that comes out of a box because that gets you started in the right direction and then you can expand from there. And in this video, I'll be showing you my sourdough vanilla cake. 
I will have the link for the recipe in the description box below. Once I have the recipe posted, I don't have that posted yet. So as soon as I have that, you can find it down there and then you can get the recipe. How do you need to prepare the jars? What I recommend is making sure that they're really clean. You don't have to sterilize them. I just put them in the dishwasher and that is good for my purposes. If you are a little bit more worried about cleanliness, you can always sterilize them the way that you usually do. However, what I will do is make sure that the lids are completely clean. Let's quickly talk about some helpful tools. You will need a pastry brush or something to spread some oil or fat on the inside of your jars. Some people like to use a jar lifter just because those glass jars are going to be really hot once you remove them from the oven. You can also use a set of pot holders or oven mitts. I have started sterilizing my lids and also they need to be hot and wet and I did that in a pot of boiling water over the stove and I turned on my oven but it's really important to remove whatever you're setting your jars on before you preheat your oven. What happens if you have a room temperature liquid in a room temperature glass and you set it on a hot oven rack or baking sheet the glass is going to break. It's really fun when your cake comes out on the bottom. So really simple. Just remove your oven rack or baking sheet before you want to set the glasses on them. Now I will actually just bake the cakes in these jars and you'll probably wonder how many jars you can bake from one recipe. I have made a half recipe of my sourdough vanilla cake batter. Um, if you're using a full recipe, you should be getting about six, maybe more jars like the pint sized jars. And obviously the smaller your jars, the more cakes you get. So what you can always do is if you have too much batter, you can always bake it, the remaining batter in a loaf pan, and then you don't waste anything. I'm going to grease my jars here and you only want to grease the bottom and the sides. You do not want to get any grease on the rim here because that is where we're trying to get a seal. And if there's any oil or butter on it, you're not going to get a good seal and then your cakes won't last and you'll just keep them in the refrigerator and eat them within a week or so. For this recipe, I'm using one and a quarter cup of flour, one cup of sugar, a little less maybe, a half a teaspoon of salt, one half teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of baking powder, and I mix up the dry ingredients. I'm adding one half cup of milk, two eggs, a tablespoon of vanilla extract, one quarter cup of sourdough starter, and a quarter cup of melted butter. And I'm just going to combine the ingredients into a uniform batter here. And lastly, I like to add some chocolate chips to make it a little bit more interesting. It's about half a cup of chocolate chips. When you fill the jars, it's really important to fill them no more than a half, maybe two thirds at the most. That will depend on your recipe, on the consistency of your batter. If it's really runny, it might rise a little bit more. And if it's a stiffer batter, it might not rise quite as much. It also depends on how much baking powder you have in there, leavening agent. So I recommend staying on the safe side with about half. But I will talk about what happens if you fill the jars too much and I will actually, one of these jars I'm going to fill a little bit more and then I can show you what I'm doing in that case. When you fill the jars, you really want to make sure to not get any batter on the rim. You can always wipe that off with some cloth, but it's just easier to prevent it in first place. Now we don't put a lid on quite yet. We bake them open. 
Okay, now we're ready to bake them. And if you're wondering how long you should bake them, I would start with 25 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And then you simply do the test by inserting a toothpick or some sort of cake tester to see if there's any um, dough that's not quite baked yet and, and sticks to the toothpick or not. So here are my baked cakes in a jar. This one um, hasn't really sealed well, but um, you know, it's also really small and somebody can eat that pretty soon. This one I sealed and when it was still hot, and as you can see, there is a vacuum here. And I'm gonna do that over the cutting board so I can hold it here. This one, will probably be good for about four to six weeks, just like it is, because I sealed it when it was hot, there's a vacuum. This is another cake I made the other day. And as you can see, there's also a really good vacuum here. I can't press this in. And this one is one that I filled a little bit too high. And what you can do, none of them did that really except this one, but it's just basically barely touching the lid. So if you fill your jars too high and the cake comes out, if it just comes out a little bit, you might wanna just press it in with a lid or you take a knife and cut the top off, put the lid on and then you close it. Now this one I let cool down and what you can do for, with this one to make it last even longer is to, let me get my lid here out of my water. You can put this on. And clamp it. You can process this in a water bath canner at about 215 degrees for about 30 minutes, or you put it in your oven at about 215 degrees for 30 minutes and then it should really last for months. Now as to the question, how long does it last? What will happen with the cakes in the jars if you store them too long? And some people have actually had cakes that lasted for a year and they were still good. So you never really know. It depends on the ingredients and the ratios. And so there's no hard and fast rule. What will happen if you store this too long is that the cakes will become a little bit sour. Now you can smell it, but just sour smell to them and a sour taste. Is that gonna kill you? No, you can still eat it and you may not like the taste, but it's not gonna kill you. Now you may wonder what the differences are between closing the lids while the cakes are still hot versus letting them cool down and then processing them again. Well, for one, those may last a little bit longer. However, these are gonna be a little bit softer because if, if and when you close them while they're still hot, you're gonna have some condensing, con, condensation. <laughs> I couldn't get it out. You would have some condensation on the inside and so your cake's gonna be a little bit moister versus if you let them really cool down and then process them, you will not have that and they're gonna be just a bit on the drier side. However, they will never completely dry out and they will be fantastic. I'm gonna actually try this one since it didn't seal all so well and it's just the perfect individual serving. The little chocolate chips in there. Mm. 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 As you can see, I'm enjoying my cake here. Mm, very good. I think I'm gonna finish this. Actually, I did get a lot of my information from a German YouTuber, my friend Steffi from Steffi Kocht Ein. I'll be linking her. And in the description box, if you happen to speak German, she has a wealth of knowledge on all things canning and preserving. So I would definitely check her out. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. I have more recipes in this playlist and I look forward 
to seeing you in the next video.